Hello, my name is Tony Timmons. I'm a member of the Progressive Dairy Solutions team. I've been in the California dairy industry for the last 12 years, primarily on the AI business. Today I'm going to talk about reproduction and reproduction in your herds. Knowing the impact that reproduction and nutrition have on one another, uh, after spending that time in the AI industry, really led me to, to becoming a dairy nutritionist and utilizing those skills learned in the AI business to help, help you and help our customers um, through the nutrition side. When dis discussing Repro, one often asks us, what is the best synchronization program? We try to take a different approach in, in reproduction and on our herds and not focus on the program that you're using, rather establishing where you're at today. We find that many programs, whether it be a simple lutealized program, an off-sync program, a pre-sync pre program, double off-sync, even some of the uh, activity monitoring systems out there produce at the end the same result. So when you're looking at uh, the, way, the best way to get a cow pregnant, you really need to focus on a number of things. So first off, we would like to establish where you're at, what are you currently doing to get to that point, and then from there, what is preventing you from the optimization of your fertility in your herd. Once we establish what we are doing currently within our Repro program, then we could take a look at what we can do to optimize that program. We could find out what is limiting us in getting that optimal fertility, driving pregnancies on the dairy, and thus driving milk production. Start focusing in the transition area. We like to start here in the dry cow area. From a nutrition point of view, we must focus on our dry cows, close-ups, and fresh cows to ever hope of maximizing conception rate and heat expression. As you can see, we're here at the dry cow pen. When we're looking at nutrition in the dry cow pen and moving to the close-ups, we're gonna have that transition in the diet. Right now, our focus in the dry cow pen needs to be maintaining the body condition score on our animals as they move to the close-up. Once on the close-up diet, we need to do everything we can to ensure adequate space, access to feed, minimize competition amongst the cows, Make sure we're providing around 200 square foot per animal in our close-up pens to give those cows plenty of room. As you can see in the diet itself, moving from the dry cow period where we have a high level of forage in our diet and adding concentrates in, the, in, the, in an effort to stair-step the cow into its lactating diet. Now we're in the fresh pen. As you can see, the diet has changed quite a bit. Our goal in the, in the fresh pen from a nutrition standpoint is balancing the solid ration, increasing the energy, we set ourselves up for reproductive success. Once we've accomplished a successful transition program, we have set ourselves up for optimal fertility. We see many of our Holstein herds today seeing conception rates in the mid to high 30s to the low 40% conception rate range on the first four to five cycles or four times bred, whatever you'd like to look at. For example, if we take a 1,000 cows moving through the period of the first four times bred or four cycles, they're achieving a 35% conception rate on those first four services. At the end of those four services, we will have 18% of, the, of those 1,000 cows still left open. If we bump that conception rate on first four services to 42% conception rate, which we see in many of our herds, we will only have 11% open after those first four breedings. As you can see, by moving our conception rate up in the first four cycles, or four services, we can drive our, our profitability in our herds by decreasing our days in milk, which will increase our milk production. What happens to the bottom line on your dairy once we've improved the transition, um, main, um, optimized our reproductive program, is what you see here. We get into a position where we have an abundance of heifers in our herd. We're producing um, additional income sources, either through um, milking more cows or the potential to sell these heifers. Heifer reproduction. Most critical thing, in my opinion, on heifer reproduction is determining when you want to get heifers bred. Once you've determined when you want to get heifers bred, it is critical to get them moved into that pen or wherever you plan on breeding them. Often I see on reproduction on, on dairy cows, people doing weekly vet checks, but only checking their heifers once a month. We need to treat our heifers with the same level of intensity that we do our cows. 
therefore, my suggestion when you're in your heifer pen breeding pens is to breed your heifers and get them checked and check them every time you're checking cows, whether that be every week or every other week. Move those pregnant animals out and bring in the next wave of animals. We need to make sure that we first establish a time when we want those heifers bred. For example, 13 months. We want them bred at 13 months, we need to get them moved into a pen at 13 months. Whatever we can do to tighten the window of average age of first calving, we can drive profitability. What we're trying to do by getting these heifers moved in, getting them bred, getting them preg checked, pregnancy moved out, well, all we're trying to do is tighten that window of average age at first calving. With just a few simple protocols in your heifer program, you can tighten that window of average age of first calving. By establishing those protocols in the heifer program, you can deliver a very consistent flow of heifers and springers into your milking herd. We want a structurally sound heifer, one that's gonna take off once she enters the milking string.